Good morning, sunshine. Grab your favorite cup, fill it up, and let's start this day right together. Well, it is a new year, new challenges, new ways and opportunities to serve the Lord and to grow in our walk. I hope that you are doing just that. Uh, I've joined up with several others from the Brockport from Methodist Church who are uh, journeying through the Bible in a year. I know others have made commitments, joining in small groups, um, committing to their churches and attending regularly, uh, serving more. All of these are fantastic things, but what you need to make sure is that you actually finish what you start. Now, for those of us who are Buffalo Bills fans, that was a harsh lesson the other day when they ended up losing 22 to 19 in our playoff bout. But uh, when it comes to following Christ, uh, we don't have to worry what's going to happen at the end as long as we stay focused on Him. And so I, I want to give you a word, and this word comes from Philippians 3, beginning in verse 12. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Isn't that a good word? That passage is something that has affected me for for most of my Christian walk. You know, just that idea of, of perseverance and pressing on no matter what comes our way. And there are, you know, basically just a, a, a couple of very simple yet profound commands that Paul gives in order to do this. And what I want to relate it to today, and in many ways, Paul uh, has in other places related it to racing is back in 2011 when I decided that I was going to start running. Now, uh, Sid Bolton, he let me know when I started out the difference between a jogger and a runner, and that was an entry tag. And so that was my goal. I wanted to do the couch to 5K and when I first started out, I did not think I was gonna make it. It was so difficult. I was sick, it was winter, I was on the treadmill, so it wasn't exactly the most exciting thing to do. But you know what? I stuck with it day after day after day. I did not miss one day. Throughout this, I, I ended up shedding about 60 pounds and I ran my very first 5K out in St. Louis, Missouri. Now, I have to admit, it was a struggle. Uh, I had just some um, problems with my uh, my shins uh, at that time, some shin splints that they thought might have been worse. I had literally bought new shoes the day before, not something I would recommend. It was so much more hot and humid at 8 a.m. in St. Louis than it is here at noon at that time. And there were a lot of hills which I had not practiced on. And so even though I, I started off, you know, running fast pretty quickly, um, I, I started walking and, and I did, I finished, not in the time that I wanted, um, 
but I did finish. Well, everyone, you've got to start out that way, right? And so I just continued. You know, then there was the strawberry race, and then, you know, the Cataraugus Camp race, and then I was uh, doing a, a, an 8K here, a 10K there, and so forth. And at some point, uh, the Niagara Half Marathon got brought up. Now, for someone who has never been a runner in their life until just a few months earlier, uh, that was just a, a crazy thought, and yet I signed up for it and I trained. And let me tell you, um, it is important, just as with our Christian walk, to have others to train with, you know, to keep you accountable, to keep you encouraged. Uh, I, one of my favorite, favorite runs was when I would run um, basically a 5K, 3.1 miles down to the church from my house, and I would join up with somebody, and we would run the 5K route around the Strawberry Fest, and then I would run another 5K back home. And what would happen is I would start running and I would want to make sure that I was there on time. So I would run uh, a very good pace on the way down. And then when I was running with the person, my mind wasn't so much on the running. We were talking, you know, we were fellowshipping. It was a, it was a good thing. And then afterward, I realized how fast we'd actually gone. And so I wanted to get a new PR. And so I'd run as fast as I could home. And it, it was just, it was a great time. You know, there were ups and downs. There were some um, injuries along the way. Um, I found out the hard way about not getting <clears throat> set on time and starting off too fast and all these things. Uh, but I persevered on. And I finally made it to that point in September 2011 uh, where myself and I had some friends that were there, um, Tom Rivers, Wayne Burleson, uh, Brian Krieger, who were also running at that time. And so we, we traveled down together. In fact, here's a, a picture of us here beforehand. And when that race started, I felt good. I'd never ran with so many people before, but eventually I got where there was a pretty good gap, both in front and in back of me. And I was keeping a really good pace. I had uh, my phone, I had an app on there, so it was letting me know, you know, by GPS, you know, exactly how far I had gone, you know, what my pace was, you know, cause I was, I, my goal, I wanted to get as close to two hours as possible. If you aren't familiar, a, a uh, half marathon, it's 13.1 miles. Now, I got to about the halfway mark and I was literally right around the one hour mark. And I was feeling fantastic. I thought, I could do this forever. Now, I hadn't even ran 13.1 miles to that point. I never ran more than 10. I figured, well, watch another 5K. Well, as time went on, I, I found out, you know, it, it, it gets harder. And I would find myself, you know, constantly looking down to see how far I've gone. In other words, looking back, rather than thinking about where I'm headed. And here is where that really came down hard on me. Uh, we got to a certain point, uh, it looked like it was the 10 mile mark according to my app. And I was feeling great. And I ran about another mile and a half when I came across the official 10 mile mark. Something had happened there on the Niagara border uh, that messed up my GPS. And so all of a sudden I was a mile and a half back from where I thought I was. And mentally, it was debilitating. I literally stopped in my tracks. I had not stopped running once to that point. I stopped and I just felt kind of crushed because I was focusing back rather than just continuing forward. You know, sometimes in our Christian walk, we feel like we should be at a certain level and when we're not there by the time that we think we should be, you know, we just feel like ditching it. 
you know, we feel like, oh, I've done all this hard work and I'm still not there yet. But don't stop. Keep persevering. Keep focusing. As we would, <clears throat> uh, as I would continue on, I did start to run again, but it was kind of a run, walk, run, walk. It was very hard to get going. And also, I didn't realize there was not going to be another water stop. And I was so thirsty. And I have to tell you, um, there was someone who was running and, you know, it seemed like they're running at a very good pace and they were up ahead of me. But when this girl realized that I was struggling, rather than trying to get a better um, time, she turned around, ran back to me, gave me her water bottle, and then turned around and kept running. You know, that, that was an amazing thing. And not only did the water help, but just her sacrifice inspired me. You know, I didn't want to be for nothing. And so I picked up and I started to run again. And, and I kept getting closer. And, <clears throat> you know, it's not just forgetting what's behind, but as it says, it's it's straining toward what's ahead. You know, you want to finish, you want to get that final prize. And so I was looking, where is this finish line? You know, I didn't trust my GPS anymore. Where was it? How far away? Now, unfortunately, even when I got closer, it wasn't the best setup for a race because you could not see the finish line. Uh, it literally, it, it went up a hill and, and off to the side in the woods, and that's where the finish line was, and so there was not a, a visible sign of it. And so once again, um, I just stopped, and I struggled. I struggled to keep going. And that's when my friends, who had already finished, probably, you know, had something to drink, maybe a bite to eat, came back for me. <laughs> and th they just kind of rallied around me and they ran that last part with me and they kept saying, it's just up here, it's just up ahead. One would run farther and say, you're just a little bit further. And I struggled and I ran and I finally finished the race and I got my uh, um, very first uh, award. I guess this is more of a participation thing, although you don't get it if you don't finish, right? So uh, this is very meaningful to me and even more meaningful uh, on the back says in memory of Matt Jones. Matt was a, a great friend of mine uh, through college and beyond who unfortunately uh, lost a battle to cancer when he was only about 30 years old. But he also is someone who inspired me to press on. Uh, he lived his life to the full, uh, even with the cancer. He, he spoke in my church at the time, um, not about how God had healed him, but how God was still working in and through him in spite of that. You know, it was just, it was really uh, something that, that inspired me. And I was glad to be able to finish that race in honor of him. It is so important that we do two things in order to get to that finish line. The first, and Paul hits on this, especially in Hebrews 12, straining ahead, you've got to focus on Christ. If we're not focused on Christ, we're gonna fall. You know, remember Peter, when he stepped out of that boat onto the water, when he focused on Christ, he did fine. But when he got distracted by the winds and to the waves, that's when he started to sink. You know, in Hebrews 12, Paul says there that uh, <clears throat> we need to get rid of all of those things that would cause us to stumble and keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. In other words, he's the one that created the path and he is the one who has finished the race. So who better to follow than someone who's already been there? Just like my friends who had already finished the race, they came back and they showed me how to get to that place. So you, you need to keep your eyes focused on Jesus. You need to be in prayer and in the word daily. 
you need to be in a small group and going to a local church, you know, regularly, weekly. Uh, you need to make sure that um, Jesus comes first before, you know, your work or politics or, you know, amusement, hobbies, whatever it is. You know, put Jesus first. Keep your eyes focused on him. He will not lead you astray. The other thing is surround yourself with people who are running in the same direction. I can't tell you enough how many times it has been my family and friends who have um, inspired me to continue on, whether, you know, it's in a race like this or whether it's, you know, just in life in my Christian walk in ministry, uh, by their encouraging words, by the way they live their life, by journeying with me together. And my prayer is that you would have that. In fact, my hope is that, you know, these videos can at least uh, supplement that for you. You know, I, I hope that we can run this race together uh, via the internet. You know, it's, it's not as good as being face to face but in the world that we live in, it can make it much smaller so that uh, many of us, no matter where we live, not just in the States, but around the world, we can connect like this. So friends, as we begin this new year, um, I just challenge you to, to make sure that you finish what you start. Because it, it's not how we start, but how we finish the counts, right? Make sure that you don't get stuck looking in the past, that you don't get stuck simply um, <clears throat> looking toward the future, but but not at Christ. Instead, focus your eyes on Him. Be in the Word, be in prayer, be around others who are going in the same direction as you. And let's finish this race right together. God bless. Have a great day.